Hello, and welcome to the first installment of this YouTube channel I've put together to help your guitar playing go to the next level and through the roof. Um, I'm calling this channel The Invisible Guitar. It's going to really encompass my philosophy and all the years I've been doing this. I've uh, had a lot of uh, really good feedback from my students who've you know, adopted these philosophies in the way that we kind of see things. And uh, even if you're an advanced player, I recommend starting with the beginning of these things so we can go through and make some new distinctions and find some clarity. Because in this world that we live in now, there's so much information, it's, it's like a data smog. You know, you could Google how to play the guitar and you could be there for 17 years trying to sift through all the information. And some of it's great and some of it's not great, you know. And so I'm going to try to provide kind of a an oasis and a sea of... Uh, data smog, a real clear spot to really take it to the next level, especially for those of you who want to improvise. And uh, I think to me, that's something dear I always had with, with music in general. I always tell people, would you rather be memorize a bunch of jokes or would you rather be funny? Let's say that again. Would you rather memorize a bunch of jokes or just be funny? Everyone answers the question the same. They would rather just be funny. But how many guitar players memorize a bunch of licks and then they plug them in? You know, what I call the pentatonic holding onto the side of the pool and paddling kind of thing. It's, it's you know, that's not something I wanted to do. And we'll talk about how that develops and everything. But today I'd like to do something that my father taught me. In the military, they do three things. One, they establish the perimeter. Two, they set up the channels of communication. And three, then they attack. That's how we're going to do this. So many guitar players that I meet don't know their neck. They don't know how many frets they have even. Don't know the names of all the net, uh, notes on the neck cold. That's important. Has nothing to do with reading music. Has everything to do with getting around and arranging things and learning about intervals. Then tomorrow in lesson two, we're going to set up the channels of communication, which are these guys, your ears. You know, our creator gave us two ears and one mouth, so he obviously wanted us to listen more, and we're going to really dial that in tomorrow. And then lesson three, we're going to attack, and that's going to be talking about your right hand or your left hand, if you're left-handed, which is your motor. And I'm interested in having a precision motor over here, so we're going to talk about Ferrari or more of a uh, Lamborghini approach to the right hand, and not this big super strumming thing and over overexerting yourself. So, let's establish the perimeter. Here we go. We all probably know the names of our strings on the guitar. Let's talk about that a little bit. When I was taught, it was uh, Elvis, always, drinks, Gatorade, before eating. The low E being the low E because it's low. And the high E being the high E because it's high. And that's a little counterintuitive too because you know, when you look at the guitar and you're looking down at it, a lot of people would think, oh, well, this is the first string. Well, it's not. It's the bottom string, okay? Because music, okay, like uh, Mr. Garrison, because in music, we're focused on this. So this is the bottom string. Even though visually it might look like the first string, it's counterintuitive. This is the low string. So Elvis always drinks Gatorade before eating. One of my students, uh, her grandfather taught her a fun one since Easter's coming up. I'll share with you too. Here's how to do it backwards. I almost do everything forwards and backwards. It's great for the, uh, the brain. Easter bunny gets drunk after Easter. So you got two ways you can think of it. From the bottom, Elvis always drinks Gatorade before eating. From the top, Easter bunny gets drunk after Easter. Now, my mother, who was valedictorian in her class, always told me that association is a great way to learn things, and I agree. So now we know something. We know the names of our open strings. So let's just call that the first point of reference, and we're going to go to the fifth fret of the low E string. Now, this is going to be the first point of reference. We already know the names of our open strings. We're going to use this to our advantage. Well, the way the guitar is set up, E, F, G, A, the fifth fret of the low E string, here's something you can write down and memorize. The name of the fifth fret of the low E string is always the same as the next open string. So that would be A. 
And then if I go to the first point of reference on the A string, the fifth fret, the name of the next open string is D. And then if I go to the first point of reference on the D string, the fifth fret, the name of the next open string is G. Now, because of the way the guitar is designed, which I strongly believe is flawed, I'm not a fan of it. Even when I was a young kid, it baffled me. I just thought that's the way it was. I don't have to deal with it. But it's very controversial. We're going to talk about this a lot. Even Eddie Van Halen has addressed this issue, and I think he knows a thing or two about guitar. And my friend Alan Holdsworth, we were down in Houston one time having this conversation, and he said if he could start the guitar all over again, he would tune it in straight force. I would do the exact same thing. And when I have a son, if he wants to play the guitar, I'm going to encourage him to tune it in straight force. It would make a lot more sense that way, just like a cello or a violin is. And I know why it's done this way. That's a whole other thing. We won't get into that today. But the rule still applies. We go to the fourth fret on the G string, and the name of that note is the same as the next open string, which would be B. Then we go to the first point of reference on the B string, which is the fifth fret, and that is called E for the next one. So we got A, D, G, B, E. Now, if you wanted to know what the name of the fifth fret of the high E string was, you could use the same logic because the guitar has a low E and a high E. So if the low E fifth fret was an A, so is the high E going to be an A. So everything's like, you know, as above, so below the same on those two strings. The high E and the low E are parallel. Okay. Now, the second point of reference on the guitar is the 12th fret, Snake Eyes, like in Dice. The 12th fret, and the name of that note is always the same as the open string that you're on. So, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. So, if the low E open is E, the 12th fret is E. If the open A, A is A, the 12th fret is A. If the open D, D is D, the 12th fret is D. And the open G, 12th fret, is G. And the open B string is B, 12th fret is B. And the high E, and then the 12th fret is high E. So you have another Elvis always drinks Gatorade before eating there. Now, we have three things. We know the open names of our strings. Elvis always drinks Gatorade before eating. We know the first point of reference, A, D, G, B, E, and then A. Then we know the second point of reference, E, A, D, G, B, E. Now, without a guitar or a pick, you can get super sharp with this because it's math at this point. So you pick a note out of the wild blue, blue yonder. Let's say I picked a note F, all right? E to F is a natural half step. There's two spots on the piano where you'll see there's white key, white key, no black key in the middle. E and F and B and C, those are the natural half steps in the mother scale, which is the major scale. I have a lot to say about major scales too. The way they're taught is completely ridiculous. But we're gonna break that mold too. However, if you know that it's a half step, then low E, what comes after E in the alphabet? F, right? So E sharp would be F, right? And F flat would be E. Sharp just means to raise a half step Flat just means to lower, like a flat tire, a half step. So that's just a concept, you know, and, and we're going to use that to our advantage a lot in these classes. So now I can just use my imagination. So let's say I pick the note F. Well, let's go through the guitar and see what happens. Well, I know the first point of reference on the low E string is an A. And I know that the second point of reference on the low E string is an E. So then I can ask myself a quality question. And remember, the quality of your life is the quality of your questions. So I'm looking for F. Is F closer to E or is it closer to A in the musical alphabet? Well, it's easy. It's closer to E. And then the next question is, does F come before or after E? Well, it comes after. So I can use logic and I can say, well, if this is E, the 12th fret, then I know that the 13th fret would be F. Now we know that. And you can always add or subtract 12 and get the same note. So 13 minus 12 is 1. So the first fret is also an F. I can say 1 plus 12, 13. D. 
Done. Let's go to the next string. First point of reference on the A string is a D. Second point of reference on the A string is an A. I can ask myself, is F closer to D or is it closer to A in the musical alphabet? Well, that one's kind of equidistant. It's a little bit uh, elusive. We, we have to figure it out. Here's D, a whole step to E. We know E to F is a natural half step. There it is. The eighth fret of the A string is the note F. And you'll notice it's closer to D than it is A. D is a minor third. F to A is a major third. So one and a half steps is a minor third. Two whole steps is a major third. You're going to want to write that down later too. Now, I know the eighth fret of my A string is the note F. I can always add or subtract 12. Let's do the math. 8 plus 12 is 20. So I go to the 20th fret on my guitar. And we now know that that's also an F. 20 minus 12, 8. And I also notice, oh, my guitar's got 21 frets. You wouldn't believe how many people have come to me been playing the guitar for several years. They don't even know how many frets they have on my guitar. See, those kinds of things will interrupt your flow. No pun intended. Okay, now let's go to the first point of reference on the D string, which is the note G. And the second point of reference on the D string, which is the note D. Now, which one is F closer to G or closer to D? Well, we would know it would obviously be closer to G. So we have to ask ourselves this question now. Does F come before or after G in the alphabet? Well, it comes before. So third fret is the note F. See, we start getting around the guitar really well. So now I know that the third fret of my D string is an F. Well, 3 plus 12, 15. 15 minus 12, 3. Done with that string. Now, let's go to the, the G string, which is the flawed one. We go to the first point of reference, which is the note B. We go to the second point of reference, which is the note G. Then we ask ourselves, well, is the note F is what we're looking for? Is it closer to G or is it closer to B? Well, obviously, we just did it. It's closer to G. So 12, whole step down, there's F. And now I know that the 10th fret of my G string is the note F. Now, I can't subtract and go down because I've run out of room, but I could add 10 plus 12, 22. Oh, well, my guitar only has 21 frets, so I can't play that. Bullshit. Yeah, you can. Just go to the 21st fret and bend it up. See how this takes control of the guitar? I know it seems like a little thing, but I got an F if I want it. Same note, right? So I love this stuff. Now let's go to the B string. First point of reference, E. Second point of reference, B. So I know that the fifth fret of my B string is an E, and I know that the twelfth uh, fret of my B string is a B. I'm looking for the note F. Is F closer to E or is it closer to B? Well, obviously it's closer to E. So E, half step up, there's F. Did you know the sixth fret of your B string is an F note? Now you do. And you didn't memorize it. You discovered it. You found it. This is the way to learn. Memorization is very overrated. I do, I do very little memorization in my life. I do a lot of familiarization. Okay? And uh, 6 plus 12, 18. There it is. 18 minus 12, 6. Then we go to the first point of reference on our A string, which is the same as the low E. We've been here and done that, but we're going to do it again. All right, first point of reference is A. Second point of reference is E. We're looking for F. F is obviously closer to E than it is to A. So we go to the 12th fret, go up a half step. 13th fret is F. And 13 minus 12 is 1. There we are. And look, in that short amount of time, we took one note and we went all the way through. Now, what I encourage you to do is write down A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Cut them out. Put them in a cup and draw out a, a note a day and do that. And in one week, you'll have went through every note in the scale. You don't have to worry about sharps and flats. We're going to talk about that. It's just conceptual. You know, if you know what A is, you know what A sharp is. And if you know what A is, you know what A flat is. And by the way, they can be inharmonic too, you know. Inharmonic means same damn thing. So A sharp is the same as B flat. It's just a directional shift the way we, we adjust. Okay, so that was lesson one. We established the perimeter today. And a lot of people who've been playing the guitar for years need to do this. And I can prove it to you. You should see it in my studio. It's, it's rampant. 
All right, so enjoy that. Take it to the bank. Tomorrow we're going to uh, set up the channels of communication and we're going to talk about intervals. The most important thing in music, which has nothing to do with reading music once again, has everything to do with ear training. It's more about ear training. I'll see you tomorrow.